Well, today I'm going to share with you uh, uh, part two of the series, The Journey of a Jesus Follower. This is a series that takes us through the book of Ephesians, a writing uh, by Paul that is wrought with revelation and, and spiritual insight. And as I read through the text for today, the thing that jumped out at me more than anything else was the emphasis Paul placed on the power of God and what the power of God is able to do in our lives. So today I'm going to share with you a word in, uh, from the Lord entitled, The Believer's GPS. The Believer's GPS. To make a successful trek through life as a Jesus follower, and that is the title of this series, The Journey of a Jesus Follower. To make a successful trek through life as a follower of Jesus, we have to be led by the one who knows our past, who is present with us now, and who is fully aware of where we're headed. The only one who has such understanding, the only one who knows our past, present, and future is God. And this all-knowing, all-seeing, all-powerful God lives inside of us in the person of the Holy Spirit. When speaking of his own earthly voyage, Jesus said, the words I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. But he who dwells in me, he does the work. Jesus was speaking of none other than the Holy Spirit. Listen to Paul's prayer in Ephesians 1, 17 through 19. Paul said, I pray that, we, that you would have spiritual wisdom and insight. I pray that you would grow in your knowledge of Christ. I pray that your hearts be flooded with the light of God. That you would understand the confident hope God has given to those whom he called. I pray that you would understand the incredible greatness of God's power for those who believe. Everything that Paul prayed for, everything that Paul emphasized in this prayer, we receive by way of the Holy Spirit, the GPS of our soul. The spirit of revelation who's been given to us to lead and guide us through life as we journey as a Jesus follower. You know, years ago, travelers would go from point A to point B using roadmaps. How many of you remember those days? Let me see a show you. Now, you're dating yourself. Okay, some of you, okay, I'm about to say some of you know. Now, you ain't reading your hand, but yeah, you just, listen, young people don't know nothing about a roadmap, right? We remember a roadmap. <laughs> But the days of travel, via roadways, change with the invention and the evolution of the GPS, which stands for Global Positioning System. Now, a highly functioning GPS works by communicating with satellites that are orbiting the Earth, and it transmits signals, time signals to and from the satellites. And by subtracting the time that the signals are transmitted from the time they are received, a GPS can tell exactly how far you are from each satellite. The GPS also knows the exact position of each satellite at the moment the signals are transmitted so given the travel time of the GPS signals from the satellites and their exact position in the sky, the GPS can then determine exactly where you are. 
by using your exact location and the information stored in the GPS about the roads that you're traveling on, it is then able to determine a, right, a, a, a route or a, 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 a roadway of travel that is best for you. It also is able to calculate the expected travel time it would take for you to reach your destination. Now, I don't know about you, but most of the time, my GPS has too much time in there <laughs> because my wife is driving <laughs> and the... <laughs> I, 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 I listen. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean, right? It calculates the time based on you doing what? Traveling according to the speed limit. So how do you improve your travel time? I've improved my travel time by letting my wife drive. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> no, just kidding. I'm really not. I'm <laughs> you know, an amazing thing is today's technology... GPS communicates with, with the satellites, and it can even detect heavy travel along the route that you're on and then reroute you around that traffic if you so choose. If you so choose. I ain't got to say nothing else about that because some of you got it. I don't know about you, but being of the age where road maps and atlases were used for travel, it is so much better for me to just speak to my girl Siri <laughs> and ask her for directions. Siri can even find certain things for me like a particular type of food that I may want to eat or a nearby gas station. Siri can also answer some very general questions that you may have. Now, she may get off a little bit every now and then, but I still much rather have her giving me directions than me having to depend on a road map. The Holy Spirit is like Siri, only many times over much better. He is the GPS of the believer. And any believer who chooses to travel this journey apart from him is like a traveler of old, one who is stuck in time, still relying on a road map for help instead of a GPS. Look around, and you'll find that there, there are far too many Christians who love Jesus and are on their way to heaven that do not depend on the, on the Holy Spirit to guide them through life. They do not look to the internal GPS that God has given us to guide us as we journey. Amen. Apart from the leading of the Holy Spirit and apart from the word of God, anything else that you rely on for directions is like using old technology. The world is also full of non-believers who are wandering through life trying to find hope. And if we're going to help believers on their journey, and if we're going to join with the Lord Jesus Christ in bringing the lost to Jesus, we must look to the Holy Spirit, the GPS of our soul for directions as to what to do, what to say, when to say it, how to say it, and who to say it to. People have lost their moral compasses. They no longer respond to the word of God like they used to. People have become desensitized to what's right and what's wrong. And more of the ways of the world have crept into the church. 
we need the wisdom of God. The Lord would have us be like the sons of Issachar who understood the signs of time and they knew what God would have them do concerning Israel. The Holy Spirit will help us discern the times and properly judge what to do. He will give us God's perspective on what's happening in the world. He will show us the powers of darkness that are working in certain regions in other society. And he will give us strategies to employ against those powers. He gives us insight into the thoughts and attitudes of people. And the ability to help them make wise decisions. He shows us how to share God's word in a way that is relevant today to people. Because the way it was shared 20 years ago, 25 years ago, it doesn't work the same way. It's the same word, and the the word would never lose its power, but we have to learn how to share it in a different way because people have become desensitized to the word of God. The Holy Spirit is able to accomplish in us and through us all these things and more. He is far superior to Siri or any other man-made GPS that we rely on. We rely on. If you would just learn and make the decision that you're going to rely on the Holy Spirit like you rely on Siri like you rely on your GPS to get you to where you're going, your journey through life will change. The Holy Spirit has a satellite that is not subject to blackout. He can not only detect the traffic ahead, but he can choose to remove it if he wants to. As he guides us to our destination, as we journey as a Jesus follower, he not only takes into account where we currently are, but also where we've been. He knows the kind of fuel we need for the journey and exactly how much fuel is needed for each season of life. When we rely on the Holy Spirit to guide us, we are assured that we will will never find ourselves stranded on the roadside. We never miss a turn that we should have taken. And we will never arrive at our desired destination late. He will always get us there on time. The Holy Spirit is the GPS of the believer. Now, as we journey through the book of Ephesians, I want to look at the development of the church of Ephesus as much as possible. It's important for me to understand as we're reading Ephesians, some of the things that took place as this church was being developed. And since we're talking today about the Holy Spirit, I want to look at when we first see the Holy Spirit mention in connection with the church at Ephesus. In Acts 19, on his third missionary journey, Paul comes to Ephesus for a second time. When he arrived there, he found several believers and he asked them this question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Don't miss that. Don't miss that. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Now this question reveals a unique perspective about a Jesus follower and it underscores two important things. Number one, every believer, every follower of Jesus can and should receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Number two, 
Not every follower of Jesus has received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Each one of us were sealed by the Holy Spirit when we believed in Jesus. We read that. He became God's seal placed on and over our lives. He joined our spirit with God, signifying our sonship, but that's not the same as being baptized in the Holy Ghost. The baptism of the Holy Spirit comes, when he comes, he opens up our heart and mind to God in a whole, on a whole nother level. And that baptism happens when a conscious decision, and please hear me, when a conscious decision is made and an earnest effort is exerted to receive the fullness of God's presence into your life. All believers have been sealed by the Holy Spirit. But not all believers have been filled with the Holy Spirit. I remember how the day of my salvation absolutely changed my life. I fell in love with God. I fell in love with Jesus because I, for the first time in my life, I realized God loved me. Yes. Yet as I watched the people around me, I saw something in them that I didn't seem to have. I was saved. I felt great. I was in love with God. But I saw this presence. I saw this power. I heard this faith this hope, this confidence. I found out it was the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So some six weeks later, I received that baptism six weeks after my salvation. I received that baptism and when I did, my walk with God totally changed forever. My love for God became stronger. And my desire to do his will and live for him burned deeper and stronger than before. All believers are sealed by the, by the Holy Spirit. But not all believers have been filled with the Holy Spirit. Please notice that when Paul met these believers, he never questioned if they believed in Christ. On the contrary, his, questions conf his question confirms that he saw them as believers. Instead, he asked if they had received the Holy Spirit when they believed. Perhaps it was a sermon given by God to Paul. To Paul. Or perhaps Paul saw that these, these believers lacked the power of God that is available to all who have trusted in Jesus. They said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And at what then were you baptized, Paul asked, and they said, into John's baptism. Paul said, John indeed baptized with, with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that, that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. In Acts 19.5 it says, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. And there were about 12 in all. So three things occurred here. Number one, they confessed that they believed in Jesus. Number two, they were baptized in water. And number three, Paul laid hands on them and they were baptized with, with the power and fire of the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit came upon them, there was an outward sign of the inward work. When the Holy Spirit came upon them, there were natural manifestations that declared the indwelling of the supernatural one. When the Holy Spirit comes upon a person, filling them with his presence, things will change. There will be evidence. There will be proof that God has come in a much more powerful way. You cannot stay the same when the Holy Spirit fills your life. He comes to empower, to infuse with life. He comes to anchor your soul in a, in a deeper way in Christ. His presence will change you then... He will work through you 
to change the world. Paul said in Ephesians 1.13, when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit, whom he promised long ago. The Holy Spirit is a mark of God's ownership of you, placing you under his protection and covering. But please do not stop at being sealed by the Holy Spirit. Seek to be filled by the Holy Spirit on an ongoing, continuous basis. He will come to you and fill you up. Like, like, like you go and add fuel to a car. He will, he will fill you up. He will replenish you. He will rebaptize you as you seek him and earnestly desire for more of God. The Holy Spirit is revealed in Ephesians in a, in a variety of ways. He is the seal of God on us. Thus authorizing us to represent Jesus. He is the revealer. The one who enlightens our heart to receive God's promise. The Holy Spirit is the one who gives us power to walk as God will have us walk on this journey as a Jesus follower. The Holy Spirit is the internal guide, the the compass of our soul, the GPS who directs our steps. Psalms 37, 23 says, the steps of a good man or of of a righteous man or a righteous woman is ordered by the Lord. And 2 Corinthians 5, 21 says, For he made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Put those two scriptures together and this is what you get. You have been made the righteousness of God in Christ. And God orders the steps of those who are righteous. Therefore, God will order your steps. How does he order them? Through the GPS. By way of the GPS, the Holy Spirit who lives in us to direct us, to lead us, to guide us. Let me tell you, as you journey through life, it is a whole lot better to get get God's mind on something than to lean to your own understanding. How do you get God's mind? From the GPS. He downloads it into you. He knows your past. He sees where you are. He sees where God wants to take you. Because you know what? Many times we don't even see that. Most of the time, we don't see that. Let me tell you how to walk by faith. Can I tell you how to walk by faith? Take the step God tells you to take. And don't look a thousand miles down the road. Don't try to figure out what the next step is. But, but depend on the GPS, the one who lives inside of you. He'll tell you, take this step. You take that step. Thank you, Jesus. I praise you. I give you glory, God. You, you, you're ordering my steps. You're directing me, God. You show me where I need to go. And you be faithful. You be faithful. Once you take the step, be faithful where you are. Don't try to figure out the next turn. You may get to a crossroad and you may go left. If you don't know the voice of the Holy Spirit, he may be telling you to go right. And you find yourself well off the beaten path. And, and then, like Siri would do, recalculating, recalculating. <laughs> The Holy Spirit got to recalculate for you and put you back on a path to get you back to where you just left from that you wouldn't have missed anyway had you depended upon the Holy Spirit to show you what to do. He will order your steps. He wants to be your friend. Befriend him. Be 
Befriend him. It's amazing how we're more apt to depend upon a man-made device than we are the God who made man. We become worshippers of the created instead of the, the one who created everything. Befriend him. Talk to him. Speak to him. When I'm walking, I say, Holy Spirit, speak to me. When I'm here praying, I say, Holy Spirit, speak to me. I talk to him, Mario, just like I talk to you. <laughs> Folks that don't know, God may think I'm crazy. <laughs> Who is he talking to now? <laughs> I'm talking to God. Jesus said he's the one who will lead and guide us into all truth. He's the GPS of our soul. And he wants to download into your spirit God's instructions for your journey as a Jesus follower. If Jesus had to depend on him for his journey, how much more do we And if nothing else, I want to encourage someone today to just stop taking it for granted and begin to have an active dialogue with God through the person of the Holy Spirit. Begin to have an active dialogue with him. Begin to talk to him. And I'm telling you, you know what's going to begin to happen? All of a sudden, you can begin to get insight you didn't have before. You begin to see things you never saw. You begin to hear things you never heard before. Why? Because you've opened up your world and said, Holy Spirit, I, 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 I open myself up to you and I welcome you, sir, to, to lead me to be the GPS of my soul. The Holy Spirit is the empower, given to be the strength within us. He is the spirit of unity, given to sustain the bond of peace. He is the spirit of holiness who is grieved by our insistence towards sin or carnality. It grieves him. Better not go there. He is the fountain from which all are to be continually filled. He is the giver of the word of God as a sword for battle. He is the heavenly assistant given to aid us in prayer and intercession. Jesus said to the Holy Spirit in John 16, 13, However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. The Holy Spirit sees the traffic and the hazards that are ahead of you as you journey through life. And he will either direct you around them or he'll give you what you need to go right through them. If you let him be your guide. He wants to be your GPS to guide you every step of the way. Speaking of the Holy Spirit and his power within us. Paul said in Ephesians 1, 19 through 20, this is the same mighty power. I want you to listen to this. Paul said this in Ephesians 1, 19 through 20. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead. That's what's living inside of you. If you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Even if not, you can and you should. The same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead. And listen to what Paul went on to say. And seated him. It was the work, the power of the Holy Spirit at work in Jesus that allowed him to do what God what God commissioned him to do. And because Jesus was able to complete the work, Paul said, and has seated him 
in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is available to you. So as I draw to a conclusion, I have two questions. Question number one. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Number two, are you relying on him as your GPS through life? Paul also wrote in Romans 8, 11, the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same spirit living within you. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of power. He is the one who quickens us, who makes us alive in Christ. And the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, Paul said he's in us. He is our GPS. Jesus said in John 14, 10, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me, he doeth the works. How did the Father dwell in Jesus? By way of the Holy Spirit. The words that we speak cannot be our own words. We have to let the Father, the, the Spirit of God who dwells in us, we have to let that Spirit, that, let Him speak through us that we too may do the works of God. Let Him be our GPS on our journey. Paul goes on to say in Ephesians 1, 19 and 20, it was the same power of God that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of, of, seat, of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly places. Because of the Holy Spirit work in Jesus, our Lord was exalted. And in verses 23, 21 to 23, he says, now he, Jesus, is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else. Not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself that describe the complete work of our Messiah, Jesus Christ. And this Christ declared the words that I speak unto you I speak not of myself but he who dwells in me he doeth the work Jesus knew who his GPS was and he refused to be led by anyone or anything else how about you as you journey as a Jesus follower, are you still using a road map? Or have you learned how to rely on God's greatest technology for our soul? God's greatest gift to our soul when it comes to how we journey through life. And that is the Holy Spirit who comes to fill us and live in us and empower us to walk out this life as a Jesus follower. We're on a journey. You're on a journey. Don't journey alone. Make a conscious decision that you're going to invite the Holy Spirit to come and walk with you every single day. If you do, you will journey well. You will journey well because he will direct your path. He will lead you. He will show you. He will strengthen you. 
He will give you power. You'll make every right turn. You'll stop when you need to stop. You'll go when you need to go. You'll understand when it's time to pull into a filling station and just and be refueled and not get burned out. You won't find yourself stranded on the, on the, on the roadside as you journey through life. Your, your faith shipwrecked because you have not leaned on the Holy Spirit, but you trusted in other stuff and other people and other things.